Hey everyone, in this video we will discuss all the previous questions from simple interest and compound interest chapter which are coming past year CUT PG MBA papers. So let us first discuss the past year breakup of assigned in CI. So in 2022 we had one question in each paper. In 2021 we had no question. In 2020 we had two and again 2019 no questions. So total there were four questions. So we will discuss all four one by one. Now before we proceed to questions, so I have a, I would like to invite to our telegram group. So if you join this telegram group, then all the free PDFs will be there. So this lecture PDF will be also there. So it will be highly beneficial for you. You can find the link in the description. Okay? So let's start the question. So the first question is from CUT PGMBA 2022, 5th September paper. The annual interest rate earned by an investment increased by 10% from last year to this year. If annual interest rate earned by the investment this year by 11%, then what was the annual interest rate last year? So if you go through this question once, then you will find that this is not an interest, simple interest and compound interest problem. This is actually a percentage problem. Why? Because this says that last year, last year, whatever percentage rate was there percentage interest rate was there this year 10 percent increase has been done okay. and from this year we got 11 percent so we are being asked with what was the annual interest rate last year so this is one of the easiest question right in the si in the percentage change questions so what we can do is let's say this was x percent so 10% increase, what would be my multiplying factor? Multiplying factor would be 10% is 1 by 10 increase, right? So since this is increased, so multiplying factor would be 1 plus 1 by 10. So that would be 11 by 10. So 11 by 10 equal to 11%. So from here, this would be cancelled out. So from here, we get x equal to 10% and option. So this is our answer. So I hope that you are aware of this multiplying factor concept. This is one of the basic concepts in percentage. Once you are aware of this concept, we can easily solve this. So let's move on to the next question. Rina took a loan of rupees 1200 with simple interest for as many years as the rate of interest. If she paid rupees 432 as interest at the end of loan period, what was the rate of interest? Okay. So here we can use our classic formula P into R into T by 100. This is SI, right? SI equal to P into R into T by 100. Now, I will also show you a method, second method, where we don't use this formula, we use a logical approach, right? So, let's first discuss this basic one. So, this is method one. So, P is 1200. And this question says that my time and my rate of interest is same. So, this one is same. And we have to find rate of interest. So, let's say, T is also equal to R. So I will put R for T as well, right? 100. And interest wise 432. Now you simply have to solve this from 12. You can cancel out 36 3 times and 3. Okay. So R square equal to 36. Therefore, R will be equal to 36 root. That is 6 percent. So that is option B. So this is a very easy question. Now, one thing I want to show you that is how we manipulate this formula. So, T into R into T by 100. Now, this formula is not bad, but we can smartly manipulate this. What we can do is we can separate out P and we can club R T by 100. Now, you know that any any number divided by 100 is percentage, right? So, we can write this as P into R T percent. So, we can say that S I equal to nothing but R T percent of P. And why RT percent? So there are two important things that you have to note that is one year SI, one year simple interest is R percent of P. Okay. So first year interest is always, one year interest is always R percent of P. So therefore, P year of simple interest would be R into T percent of P, right? Right. So the, from where, from there this formula came actually. This formula actually came from this concept one that since my SI is always same for each year, so what we can do is we can multiply by T in R percent of each. Now for this question, what you could have done is you could have, you could have found 
what percentage of principal is my SI? Right? So what you can do is 432 is what percent of my SI? SI is 1200. Now, if you cancel this out, then you will get from 12 we can cancel out, right? 12 you can cancel out 3, 36, and 7. 36. So 36 by 100 means 36 percent. So 36 percent is the interest. So this is obviously RT percent. This is obviously RT percent of 36 percent. Now I know that R and T is same. So can I say that this is R square percent is 36 percent? So therefore R is equal to the root of 36 percent that is 6 percent. Okay. So this way also you can do this is second method. Second method. In second method, what we have done is we always find that my SI is SI is let me change the color. And this is a very important one. In this question, this is not that important, but in most of the SI questions, this is important. SI is what percentage of my principal? Okay, you always find this the answer to this solution. And what is that percentage? That is always equal to RT percent. So here we found that this is 36 percent, and that 36 percent is nothing but R into T percent of P, right? Therefore, I equated. So that's the approach you can solve. You can use for SI questions. Okay. Now, question number question number third. This is from 2020 paper. Mr. Thomas invested an amount of rupees 14,000 divided into two schemes A and B at a SI of 14% and 11%. If the amount of simple interest earned in two years at is rupees 3,800, what is the amount invested in this? Now, see here we will use this approach. This important approach. That's why I was saying that this approach is very important. Now this question, this question is a very classic example of allegation in SI and CI. Right? We can use allegation here. And when do we use allegation? Allegation we generally use when we try to divide our total amount into two parts, right? Part one and part two. So here, if you notice here, we are we are dividing our fourteen thousand in two schemes, right? One at 14 percent, another at 11 percent. And what is the SI earned? This is 3800. So let's find what is this percentage of P. So 3800 by 14,200. If you solve this, can you will get two seven one nine by seven. So 190 by seven percent in two years in two years right so therefore in one year in one year divide this by two 95 by 7 so we got that my r my rate of interest is 95 by 7 percent okay and we are given two schemes 14 percent and 11 percent so what we can do is we have 14 percent and we have 11 percent and we have 95 by 7 percent my you must be aware of this a structure right this is the allegation structure so this would be 14 minus 95 by 7 percent this would be 95 by 7 minus 11 if you solve you will get 18 by 7 from here you will get 98 3 by 7 so what is the ratio 18 by 11 is 2 third 3 by 7 so this would be cancelled out 6 so from here you get 6 is to 1 and this scheme a scheme A was at 14% B was at 11% so this was for A this was for B so A is to B ratio is 6 is to 1 now total money is 14,000 total money is 14,000 and we have to find what was the amount invested in a scheme B so a scheme B in a scheme we had one part right so 1 by 7 into 14,000 so we got 2,000 is our answer so this is 2,000 option A so I hope this concept is clear to you the first concept was that we always try to find that my simple interest is what percentage of my principal okay so we found here that my simple interest is 95 by 7 percent of my principal okay 
the second thing was that we applied allegation here because there were two parts and we had a average mean. so this is average and these are individual allegation then we can find the ratio of the amounts invested so once we subtract this then we can find the ratio of this 18 by 7 is to 3 by 7 so we can cancel them out this is 6 is to 1 and once we found that my money is divided into the ratio of 6 is to 1 then obviously we can find the value of b or either a so this is b is 2000 then a would be 12000 but the question asks b only so we found it. okay i hope this is clear to you now let's move on to the next question this is fourth question and this is not a normal question this is a data sufficiency question in data sufficiency the general pattern is they will give you a question and they will give, give you some data and what they are trying to find is whether those data are sufficient to answer the question or not so here we are questioning how many years will a sum of money put at simple interest table interest table means triple interest okay. now they have given you three data points and they, what they are interested in knowing is that whether this data is sufficient to answer a one question or not okay so whether using this data you can find the value find the solution of this question so what they are asking you is debts they have a money and this becomes three times but in how many years this would become okay so in how many years my money would become triple so let's focus on the first data data a this says that interest earned in four years is half the sum so interest earned in four years is half the sum okay so si is p by two so my amount would be three p by two p plus p by two right now let's take an easy value for this so let's say i take p as two unit so si would be one unit plus one so my amount would be two plus one three unit okay now what i'm interested in knowing is can i triple in how many years I can triple my money? Okay. So my money is 2. In how many years I can triple this? So triple means 6. Right. So for 6, you will have, need 4 units of SI. Now in simple interest, we know a concept that SI is same for each year. Right. So for 1 unit, it took 4 years. So for 4 unit, this would take 4 into 4, 16 years. Right. So we found the answer. Right. You don't even need to find this answer. You only have to find whether I can find the answer by using this data or not. So I can obviously find because I know that I know that in four years I am getting one unit of simple interest. So obviously for four units I would need four into four sixty years, right? So A is sufficient. Now the moment I see that only A alone is sufficient, I can easily my find answer, right? I can easily my find my answer. So this option four is to be have to correct. But let's look at some other options as well, B and C also. So B says that. The rate of interest is 12%. So we know that rate of interest is 12%. Then in how many years I can triple my money? And this is also easy one. See, your principal is have to be become three times. So how many interest, how much percentage interest you have to earn? Obviously, 200% interest, 200% yes, interest you will have to earn. Now in one year, in one year, you earn 12%. Sorry, 12% or 2%. 12%. 12%. So basically, you will have to divide this 200 by 12 percent. This this many years you will take. So 3, 50, 50 by 3 years. Okay. You don't have to find this, but obviously you can. This alone is sufficient also, right? That's why this option is right. Either of A or B or C. Even C would also be correct. Let's check this one. The sum doubles itself in 8 years. From P to 2P, we get into 8 years. So in 3P, how many years it will take? So from here to here, we needed 1P, right? SI bravar, SI equal to 1P. So from here, we will have 2P. So basically 8 into 2, 16 years. Okay. So this was an easy question. Uh, once you know the rate, or so, once you know that in how many years I can find, out, how, in how many years I am getting this much SI, then obviously you can find the multiple of that, right? So this is all three options. All three data points are sufficient alone to answer this question. Okay. So either you can use data A or you can use data B or you can use data C to answer your case. And the concept that was important was that for each time period, my SI is constant. 
So in one year, if I'm getting 4% of interest, then in five years, I will get 4 into 5, 20% of interest. And that is the only thing you need to know in simple interest. Otherwise, all the questions you will find. If you use this concept, you will find all the questions easy. Okay, so I think okay, these are all four. Okay, so all four questions are done. So there were total four questions. Now again, a reminder for Telegram group, you can join. I will put this link in description. Okay, you can get these PDFs there. This will be highly beneficial for you. So let's meet in some other videos. I have already covered maximum video, maximum PYK videos for previous year questions. Percentage, profit loss, SI, CI is this video. Then I will have partnership. So only thing remaining is I think time and work from this year's level, time and work and time speed distance. Okay, so these two I will upload in one or two days. So thank you again.